Welcome back. My name is John Mutchell. I'm the pastor of the Ferndale Alliance Church. I want to thank you for joining us again as we continue our climb with Jesus by studying his Sermon on the Mount found in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Yesterday during our introduction, we mentioned that there are two groups of people in this story. There's the crowd, those that were interested, curious, perhaps even fans of Jesus. But then there's a much smaller group that climbed up the mountain with Jesus. They were called the followers or the disciples. And I hope that you are one of the latter group today as we climb the mountain with Jesus by looking at the first step of our climb, which is the first beatitude, the first of a group of verses that begins with the word blessed. And the word beatitude is the Latin word for blessing, and that's why it's called the beatitudes. Let me read the verse. It's chapter 5, verse 3, which says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We all know what it means to be blessed. If we say that a person's blessed, it might mean they've got a great family or a nice home or nice things. Maybe they have a great job or a career. Maybe they have a good retirement account or maybe they're, they're, they're good at sports or they're very healthy. We know what it means to be blessed, but Jesus completely flips upside down our idea what it means to be blessed. To be blessed. He's counterintuitive. He's counterculture because he says that blessed are who? Blessed are the poor, and the word poor here is, we also could translate the paupers or the beggars. Blessed are the paupers or the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now let's just take a moment to talk about that latter phrase, the kingdom of heaven. That would be everything that God has and owns. That is the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Now just imagine for a second the cumulative wealth of the wealthiest people that we know about. Maybe the Mark Zuckerbergs, the Bill Gates, the Warren Buffetts, maybe the top 100 wealthiest people on the planet add it all up and it still is a drop in the bucket compared to God's kingdom, the kingdom of God. And God promises to give that to us. Now that's a complicated subject. It has a, an immediate now component to us. Otherwise, uh, that's why Jesus said to us, uh, the kingdom of heaven is within you, but it certainly has a future tense component to it. And we'll look at that another time. But Jesus says it belongs to those who are poor in spirit. So I want to close this message by talking about what it means to be poor in spirit. It simply means to recognize our own internal emptiness apart from Jesus Christ. Apart from him, we are in need and we are empty. So what I think it means is for us to be real, to be honest, to be honest with ourselves, to be honest with our friends and our families about what's going on in us, especially during this pandemic time, and to ultimately be honest with God. And because of that, there is no reason for us to think that we're better than other people. Oddly enough, this pandemic has, in a sense, been kind of a great equalizer, affecting pretty much everybody in a similar way. So I want to close with a story that I think it, it deals with this issue of honesty, poverty of spirit, humility. Jesus tells a story in Luke chapter 18. He talks about two men coming to the temple to pray. The first man was very successful, a good man, a righteous man, a person who was successful in his spiritual and work life, who hadn't done anything wrong. He'd been very generous with his money, giving it to great causes. And when he goes to the temple... He stands there and he looks to heaven and says, God, I am thankful for who I am and I'm especially thankful that I'm not like this sinner over here. And so the, the camera in our mind's eye kind of shifts to another person, the second man that comes to the temple and he's a tax collector. He's not well liked by people and he's done a number of things that have been dishonest and wrong and he can't even look to heaven and he keeps his head bowed. He says, God, please be merciful to me. I am the sinner. I am a sinner. And Jesus looks at those two men and he says, and he asks the question, which one is justified before God? Which one's closer to God? Which, is, which of these guys is further along the path to knowing the Lord? And he says, it is the sinner. It's the tax collector. It's the one that could admit that he needed mercy. So I want to encourage you to be honest with God as we begin this first step. It is the first step on our journey up the mountain. I want to thank you for watching and I wish and hope a great day for you.